I want to take a minute here to tell you all about a programming language for Android that I discovered the other day. I think it's very cool, uh, very interesting, very easy to use. Um, I've got their website up here, which I will include a link in the description below. Um, but what it is, is it's RFO basic. Uh, what I found very interesting about it is it's as simple to program an app for your phone as downloading the app from the App Store. Now on their website, they have all kinds of support and other programs you can use to use your computer. Just, it's very, it's almost endless on the things that you can do with this programming language and the ways to do it. But what I found interesting about it was that I could actually program on the Android device itself. Um, and that had some appeal to me. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'll show you a program that I wrote in RFO Basic. It's actually my first program I wrote in it, so it might not be perfect. Um, but uh, I do recommend that anyone check out the website. Definitely download the manual. I printed mine out. I find it's easier to have a printer printed copy. Um, it allows me to make notes in the margins and anything else that I might find useful, especially while learning a new language. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and open the basic interpreter. And let's go ahead and open my tic-tac-toe program. Now before we get into too many details about it, I just want to show you the program real quick so you have an idea of what we're working with. So I'm going to go ahead and run this. Okay, it's nothing fancy, it's just a regular tic-tac-toe screen. Um, it's a multiplayer, there's no AI, it, it does require two players to play. Um, but let's just go ahead and, and we'll run through uh, a couple of games just so you can get an idea of what it does. Hey, X1, way to go. Let's see if we can get O to win on one. Yay, O1. All right, maybe let's try and get a tie game. Now, grant, granted, uh, I'm not very good at tic-tac-toe, apparently. Um, so I have had some trouble uh, <laughs> causing a tie, but uh, let's just go ahead here. This should be a tie. All right, good deal. So we have a tie. All right, so now what I want to do is uh, I'm just going to show you the program real quick in its code, uh, just so you have an idea of how it works. Um, the syntax is a little bit different than the normal basic that uh, a lot of us may know, um, but it's very powerful. It has features in basic that uh, you could only wish to have in other versions of basic, such as being able to load graphics, sound, uh, being able to do screen sizing, um, touch screen, uh, Bluetooth communication, you can load HTML pages. Um, if you look, there's a whole bunch of sample programs that come with the distribution um, that I highly recommend checking out because they will give you an idea of the commands and the syntax and the different things that you're able to do with the phone, along with the manual. Um, very cool stuff. But let's go ahead and get started with my program here. <clears throat> Um, I'm just going to kind of go through it step by step. Uh, I'll go into detail on some parts a little bit more than other parts. Um, but what I want to show you here is uh, the first the first section of the uh, program here that I thought was very cool is actually to scale the screen <clears throat> um, so that it works on different screen resolution devices. Um, I pretty much copied this straight out of the handbook. Um, I did add my own line of code um, just because I found a um, exception to the program that I wasn't included in it. Um, but we'll go over that real quick. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to set the height and the width <clears throat> that we're going to be programming in. All right, and, and I chose... Uh, 480 by 800 or 800 by 400 whatever you want to call it just because that's a small enough screen resolution that that should be common across all devices um, and, and make this an incredibly portable program if you want to do higher end graphics you may consider setting it at a um, higher resolution but what's cool is this little routine here is going to scale the screen um, to fit on any on any device uh, that's scalable to those resolutions. So the first thing it's going to do is it's going to get the actual screen size and it's going to use this gr open command. <clears throat> uh, what the gr open command does is you will need that to uh, set the background color of the screen. We're going to go ahead and set the screen to an off yellow. Um, one thing it does is it sets an opacity so that first 255 you see right there 
Um, that is actually the opacity. Um, so 255 is full on, zero is off. Um, it's kind of cool when you're doing other things. You can layer um, and have a transparency effect. The GR orientation command, what that does is that sets the screen for um, portrait mode. Um, <clears throat> then this routine, the GR screen, where we added some variables here, actual W and actual H. Um, what this does is this gets the actual screen size so that we can use that to scale it. Now one, this part I actually had to add um, because for whatever reason, not every device calculates the screen the same. Some go height first width, others go <clears throat> width first height. So what I did is I basically just wrote this line right here that if for whatever reason it scales the the <clears throat> actual width first, um, it will switch these numbers. And I did that by saying if actual W is less than actual height, then to change these numbers around. Um, I had to add that because on my tablet, for example, it looked fine. Then I put it on my phone and it was the wrong, it, it was like it was in landscape, but it wasn't. Um, but I added that and the scaling works perfect now. Um, basically after we get the, the dynamic height and the dynamic width that we calculated here or above, we're going to actually scale the screen and, um, <clears throat> we're going to do that by figuring out the ratio that it needs to be scaled with the scale width equals actual width divided by dynamic width and the same thing for the height statement. Now we're going to set the scale using our calculated variables. Super easy, really, really simple to add that into about any program to go ahead and get the screen scaling correct. You don't have to have that, but if you want it to look the same on every device, it's easy enough to put in there. But let's go ahead and get into the guts of my um, tic-tac-toe program here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a label for game. And this basically just helps us know that this is the beginning of the game itself. Um, exclamation point or REM statements uh, are remarks. They're not actual lines of code. They're used to help you understand what you're doing with the code. And in this one, we just basically remarked that it's the start of the game. We're going to set X to be the first player, um, but we're actually setting... <clears throat> the first player to be O because when we draw the screen we're going to call the routine that changes the player and that's going to set it to X at that point and if you read the read the notation you'll see that so we're set turn string the variable for turn to O and now we're going to start drawing the screen <clears throat> the way that um, GR or that um, uh, RFO basic does the um, the colors and the graphics you set a color anytime that you want to change uh, a color so if you're going to do black you can go ahead and set the color and do everything that you're going to do in black in this case this game is mostly black so we just set the color for black one time now you will notice that this the first character this 255 is the opacity we want it full opacity and then it's regular RGB commands here so 000, zero, zero is <clears throat> is black then two is for a fill and stroke um, that turns those features on and there's more information about that in the manual um, so let's go ahead and we're gonna set up the text for the title that you saw up at the top uh, we're gonna set the text alignment for left we're gonna set the size for 21 now we're gonna go ahead and draw one device tic-tac-toe now one other interesting thing, uh, which is actually cool and um, you're appreciated if you when you actually start programming is every graphics object on the screen requires a label. So the label for this text is T1, just for title 1. Then our X and Y coordinates, so it's 5 pixels o over and 25 pixels <clears throat> down. And that's the one device tic -tac multiplayer tic-tac-toe. Now we're going to set the size for 72 to make a bigger, bigger font. And then we're going to <clears throat> draw text again, and we used a different label, T2 for Title 2, and it's 5 over 90 down, tic-tac-toe. And we drop the size back down to 21, and then set the location and the title uh, and the location for the written by and the version number. All right, so we're going to draw the game grid real quick, and that's going to be this chunk of code right here. All right, pretty straightforward. Um, we're going to use a GR set stroke. Uh, what this does is this actually is the same as in like Word or any other program where you set the stroke on the line. <clears throat> 
it allows us to do that. It's zero by default, but you can set it for whatever you want to, and that's how thick the line is going to be. So now we're going to draw a line. <clears throat> Um, once again, all graphic objects have to have a uh, label. So GR line is the graphical command for to draw a line, then the title, then the starting XY, and the ending XY of the line. And we did that four times to draw the grid. The other thing about RFO Basic is every time you want to update something on the screen, you need to run this command called GR render. Now what you'll notice is, if you leave that out, you can drop, you can put all these commands in, but nothing will show on the screen. Anytime you want to update a graphic on the screen, you call this GR render. So now we're going to display at the bottom whose turn it is. So we're going to set the stroke to zero because we don't want a stroke on our text. We're going to set the size, and then we're going to call a call where it says the turn at the bottom of the screen, and then we're going to show the variable for turn. And then we're going to go run a subroutine called update turn. So we can go ahead and scroll down here real quick. And I'll explain these statements that we're seeing here in just a moment. Um, and why they look the way that they do. Alright, just another second we should be down here. Okay, so this is the update turn. And basically if turn is set for X, then we're going to set turn for O. We're going to hide the value that it shows on the screen. We're going to set the font and the size, and we're going to show whose turn it is. And we do that with this GR text. Let's just go ahead and highlight this. So let's just go over this again. So if the turn is set for X, then turn equals O. We're gonna we're going to remove where it's showing whose turn it is on the screen with the GR hide and then we're going to draw it again with the turn we're going to draw the turn again and then we're going to call the render so that it updates the screen and we'll basically do the same thing in opposite if the turn is set for zero then we're going to set the turn for X we're going to hide it we're going to update it and we're going to refresh the screen you'll notice after each of these it calls a return statement so it jumps back up to the program. So it'll only toggle between X and O when that update return subroutine is called. So let's go ahead and go back up here real quick. And we're going to keep stepping through the program. Okay, and like I said, I'll go over these statements in just a moment. Okay. So now that we called the update term. So now we're going to call the actual logic of the game and what actually makes the game work. And we did this with the title Game Logic. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to check to see if the screen's been touched. We're going to do that with these commands right here uh, called the GR Touch command. And we're going to set the X and Y coordinates for where the screen was touched. Now I only used X because if the screen's not touched, X is going to be zero. Um, so if X equals zero, then go to Game Logic. Basically, the program is not going to do anything else until the screen is touched. Um, another interesting thing about the screen scaling is um, even though the graphics may scale proportionally to the resolutions, the touch commands do not. So you need to scale the touch references according to the same size that you scaled the screen. And we can do that with this with these lines right here. Basically, um, we set XX as the variable that we're going to compare uh, equals X which is the variable that we're inputting up here in the touched command, and then by the width of what we actually scaled the screen to. All right, now you see right here we check A1. What, how I set the gameplay up was each variable here. Let's just go ahead and look here at a sample of what I expect the, the screen to look like. I broke the grid up into variables, so you can see A1, B1, C1. And what these are are variables that we will use to control whether it shows X or O on the screen. Um, very simple uh, design. Uh, a more complicated game, you may need to go a, a fancier algorithm, but come on, it's tic-tac-toe, there's nine options, it's only nine variables. It's, it was easier just to... Uh, put nine variables in for the purpose of this demonstration. So let's go ahead and go back here. So we're going to check A1, which we've already know is the top corner of the screen. Top corner, top left hand corner of the grid. 
Now, one thing I was disappointed with with RFO Basic was the if and statements. Um, it's kind of clunky. So this whole line of code, this whole block of code would normally be one line of code. Um, maybe a couple if you broke it into a if then end if statement. Um, but it still works. Um, it did take me a little while to figure out how to do this. Um, little, like I said, it's a little cumbersome, but it, it works and I might be able to figure out a better way of doing this. Um, I might write a subroutine to do if, if and statements and just call that routine. Um, but for the, for the purpose of this demonstration, I'll just show you what I did. So now that we have the touch inputs, we're going to check to make sure to start with that the touch inputs are going to be greater than 50 over and greater than 20 down. That's where we drew the first grid, or 200 down, excuse me. That's where we drew the first grid at. And then we're also going to make sure that it's smaller than the end of that grid. I specifically designed that grid uh, to be divisible by uh, 130, so each block is 130 by 130 pixels wide. Um, so that makes it pretty easy to calculate the size of the touch in there and I can go into more details of that if you guys need more um, uh, a better understanding of how I came up with sizes to come up with these parameters but basically this checks to see if the screen was touched in that first block then this will check to see if the a1 variable is blank that means that nothing has been put into that variable yet and if it has been that means that square is free to play what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and assign that variable to whose ever turn it is. Now we're going to go ahead and update the board with this subroutine here. Let's go ahead and go down to the update board. See those commands are already making a little more sense here. But let's go ahead and uh, our update board should be down here. Okay, so now basically all this does to update update what we see on the board, we set the, the text size and the locations to draw each variable. For example, we just updated a1, so it's going to draw the draw a the variable for a1. It's actually going to draw the variables for all of them, but if they're blank, it won't show anything, and if it's already got an X or O in it, it won't matter. It'll just show it again. But have to give everything a title. That's why we've got the gr.text.draw. And then I just go, went ahead and gave the label A1 just because that's what it is, and the X and Y coordinates of where to put it, and then the variable of where to put it. And I followed that same algorithm throughout here. And then we call the return statement. This goes back up to the game logic. So let's go ahead and go back to the game logic. Okay, so now it's returned back. So now our program should be at this point. And update, now it's going to go to update turn. We already know what that does. Um, if it's X, it's going to set the turn for O. And if it's O, it's going to set the turn for X. Now, one thing that you do have to do in RFO Basic with this, min you have, with it being um, basically an if and statement, what I had to do is I had to step the F's if statements um, so you need to make sure that you have as many end ifs as you do ifs or else it'll cause the e formula not to work correctly and, and you get false results um, because basically it won't realize that the if loop is closed um, and, and all, basically they all work the same way so we got a2 b2 c2 just checking to see if if those have been touched if they're blank and if they are blank then go ahead and set it for whose ever turn it is update the graphics on the board <clears throat> change the turn and then go on through the next step okay so now that a move has been inputted we're going to check to see if there's a winner the way this is going to work is we're going to check for X first to see if there's an X winner. And basically we're going to do that with this variable here. Uh, CFW string uh, is basically just an abbreviation for check for win. And we're going to set that at X to start with. So now we're going to run our check for win section. 
And I'll just go ahead and step through this. So we're going to check to see if there's a winning combination of A1, B1, C1. And I can refer back to here um, just to give you an idea of what we're doing. So we're checking to see if A1, B1, and C1 all equal the same value. So let's go ahead and go back to my program. And in this case, we're checking to see if they equal the value of check for win. So if A1 equals check for win... And then B1 also equals check for win. And C1 also equals check for win. Then this is what we're going to do. The winner, which we're going to set by a variable of winner string, is equal to check for win string. So in this case, winner equals X if X is a winner. Now we're going to draw a line across that combination. Um, it does require a title, and that title is kind of weird, but I just made it ACO for <clears throat> A, th A through C1. Um, all right, and then we're going to draw the line. Now we're going to go over to Game Over. Um, basically, we have a few routines here. They all work the same way. They check to see if the variables um, all match, and there's eight winning possibilities, so I did this eight times. Now, you definitely could create an algorithm to clean it up a little bit, but for this example, um, this works. But so let's go ahead um, and uh, show you the end game. All right, so game over. Real simple. We're going to go ahead and remove. We're going to set the stroke for zero. We're going to hide whose turn it is and <clears throat> the label for whose turn it is. Now we're going to say if winner equals X, we're going to say that X won, and we're going to end that routine. If winner happened to be O, we're going to do the same thing for O. If winner equals tie, then we're going to say, hey, it was a tie. Then we're going to set a smaller text size, and we're going to say tap here to play again, and we're going to display that. So basically, we took the bottom section of the screen out, and we updated it with our new information. Basically, now we're waiting for the screen to be touched so that we can play again. Uh, we're calling those the, the touch variables, touched x, y. Then we have x, x. We have to scale it again. And now we're just, we have one statement here to see if it was touched anywhere in the bottom of the screen, which covers the touch here section of the text. Um, so basically, if you touch anywhere on the bottom of the screen, it's going to start a new game. You don't have to touch the touch here. Just pretty much if you touch the bottom third of the screen, it's it's going to uh, start a new game. When we go to start a new game, we reset the variables to zero. We clear the screen. And we go back up to game, which will start all over again everything that we've just gone through um i did want to go over one other winning condition just so you have an idea of how i did that and that's for a tie basically all i did was i checked to see if all the variables had a value um if all the variables had a value um because this is the very last statement here there couldn't have been a winning condition or else it would have already gone to game end um the way basic works, it's line by line. So if there is a winning condition, we never would have even gotten down here. So if a button is pushed and there's no winning conditions and all of these are full, well, then we know it's a tie. So we can go ahead and set the variable for tie. I hope that makes sense. If there's any clarity about it, please put something in the comments. I'll, I'll be happy to elaborate on any aspect of this. All right, so we're going to go ahead and run it again just so you have an idea of everything we went through. All right, you can see at the top it shows our titles, then it draws the grid, then it displays turn, and it shows whose turn it is. We touch the first square up here. Well, because it was X's turn, we set A1 for X, and we updated the turn to B0. Pretty straightforward. And then we it will continue on this until there's a winning condition. In this case, there wasn't a winning condition, just like I showed you, so it was a tie. We can touch to play again. All right, this time we had a winning condition. So anyway, in conclusion, um, I hope you found this as interesting as I did. Um, like I said, there's all kinds of resources for this. You can program on your computer. You can program on your phone. I thought it was really cool that I was able to do this on my Android device itself. Um, I will include the source code for this in the description so that you can absolutely take a look at it, change it, use it. Um, 
it, it's uh for reference uh feel free to do whatever you want with it and definitely check this uh rfo basic out i will definitely be writing some more programs in it um this was my very first program just trying to get a feel for it and uh, get an idea of how everything works um if you like this video be sure to like comment and subscribe and thank you very much for watching